Activism News Network is now online. Yeah, easily over 100. What's your name and your badge number? Subject 97D Fishing. He also has an AR-15 and a Glock. Hey guys, it's Kevin from News Rocky. Yes, News Rocky, the show that's sweeping the nation each and every day, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. from the Forward TV Network. We just launched the Forward TV Network yesterday, and I'm going to tell you on March 1st what excitement we have around this studio. Today, I'm very excited about having these guests come on because we're going to be talking with these folks about what's going on across the country in the space of challenging the legal systems that have in place between the judicial system at courthouses across the country, the police and law enforcement on the streets, and basically around centered around the movement that's been taking place across this country with challenging the authority. I think that obviously anyone that watches News Rocky, you know where my position is. News Rocky is a show that uh, has, a, has a concept. We back the blue, but we also back the opportunity for everyone to be heard. We respect every person's conversation here on the News Rocky Show. So today, we're going to enjoy this conversation from some folks right here in Connecticut, our friend Tim uh, from Tyrant Slater. We actually had Tim on earlier uh, this year. Uh, we also have Joe Cool out of Chicago and Rogue Nation out of Florida. They're going to come on and explain what exactly their platform is, what they're out to, to really work for, what their uh, energy is that drives them each and every day in this space. So guys, make sure you stay in the ring. This is going to be a really, really good conversation on News Rocky. We'll see you in a moment back in the ring. Hey guys, it's Kevin on News Rocky again, and here we are, like I said, getting ready to get in the ring with three of our friends across the country, one here in Connecticut, Tim, who we'll bring on in a moment, Joe Cool out of uh, uh, Chicago, and we also have Rogue Nation out of Florida. We're going to hear from these fellows on what their actual platform is, what they do each and every day. They are creators of content. They are out there creating a conversation, certainly somewhat, uh, some would call agitating uh, the authorities. But I look at it as if there's an opportunity for us to have a conversation. What motivates someone to, to go out and put a camera on? What motivates someone to go out and challenge the authority? We're going to hear this from these three fellas today on the News Rocky Show. So let's go right to Tim uh, Tyrant Slayer Studios right here in Connecticut. And you were on with us earlier last month. Tim, how are you today? I'm doing very well today. Thank you so much for having me again. Thank you so much. So why don't we set this up before we bring on Joe Cool and uh, Rogue Nation. We uh, had you on and you were nothing but a gentleman explaining your position about, you know, what what drives you in this this space. Talk a little bit about that and then try to connect with Joe Cool and Rogue Nation as we bring them on. Well, the main drive, the main focus of uh, what we do as an activist community, uh, what I do um, each and every day alongside of Joe Cool out of Chicago and uh, Mr. Rogue Nation out of Florida and many others around the country. Uh, our focus is basically our rights and making people aware of our rights, our constitutional rights, our civil rights, uh, what our liberties you know, allow us to do and where our restrictions are, where the restrictions on our public servants are. And basically, uh, we never it's never our intention to go out and agitate anyone in our communities, in our cities, in our towns, in our states, in our local law enforcement. Um, but being on the scene in a variety of different law enforcement engagements uh, involving citizens of all walks of life, um, we often are portrayed as agitators and, and we're simply just trying to to help and to educate both sides of this equation. It's not just about empowering people and sticking it to police. It's more or less about educating the people and educating the police as well, educating our public servants so that we can all have a better, safer 
less uh, intrusive life, you know, so that we can we can live in pursuit of life, liberty and happiness uh, without being obstructed by by corruptive powers. So, so, often. so, Tim, one of the things you share with me the first time I had you on, you really ought, you audit, right? And that's how you perceive this kind of, uh, you know, sort of a role that you guys are playing. You're auditors of justice, in a sense. You you claim that you're out making sure that the laws uh, of the land are being enforced correctly. And so I want to do this. Can you please introduce Joe uh, Cool as well as Rogue Nation so we can actually bring them on? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to do that. Uh, let's start with Joe Cool. He is a very strong advocate for freedom and for civil rights, and he he carries a very strong uh, message that resonates with people from all walks of life around the country. And uh, he is not afraid to put himself at risk and possibly be illegally detained and arrested to create a platform to educate people on. Uh, Joe Cool uh, is is very inspiring. And he's very strong. He's a very passionate man. And he will stand up and fight against any injustice that's being uh, hoisted upon anybody uh, for any reason. He will be there to help fight and expose any wrongdoings or any abuses of power, just like I will. And uh, Rogue Nation is, uh, is essentially the pioneer of Activism News Network. The three of us, along with uh, 19 other members, are active members in Activism News Network, and we uh, we drum up a heck of a portfolio of video and content and education uh, every month. And uh, we're out there plugging away every day. Rogue Nation is very knowledgeable. He's, he's surrounded himself with very uh, intelligent people. Uh, he's, he's got some great um, lawyers and, and, and a great community behind him, and he's been able to help create the unity that we all want to see. He's helped bring people together and create real results in the communities in which he is operating. And he's he's all over the country from Florida to Texas to, you know, California or Arizona or wherever it may be. Uh, he is traveling and he is making a very big dent in and the problems that we are all facing. So as a, hearing, as hearing, hearing that intro to both these guys, Tim, such a, so you're really, I should bring you on the show. You're, you're a better speaker than me, but I want to go, we'll get the Rogue Nation in a minute. I want to go right to Joe Cool in Chicago. Joe Cool, can you hear me? I absolutely can. How you doing, bro? Right, I'm good. Thank you for coming on to the show today from Chicago. Uh, how, how is it? Is it cold out there today? It's freezing out here in the East Coast. Yes, uh, it's, it's not horrible. We got sun out uh, in 30s, I think, is where we are. That's not horrible for Chicago. I'm no. not complaining. Baby. Yeah, you guys, that's like summertime for you guys out there. It Joe, is. It's hoodie weather. Joe, cool. Tell me a little bit about you. I mean, you're, you're, you're in this, and I did get a chance to see some of your videos, and uh, I got to tell you, um, you know, as a former uh, person who wore a badge and a uniform, I, I kind of flipped back into my mode of, you know, where I was, and I tried to think about how it would be to be that officer. Uh, I I think one of the scenes was where a guy was uh, a patrolman was in the distance between uh, a traffic stop and you and you were kind of just going you know doing your thing talk a little bit about what your uh, passion is and why you're in this space uh, fighting for what you you call as justice i can never be as eloquent as you and ts were you guys are doing very well uh rocky i think your name is Thank you. um yeah i uh i consider myself activist you guys are interesting uh uh, guys up here because the agitation thing that you said you have uh guys up here who uh we're, we're not about the uh, agitation however a, a lot of us who do this in my opinion do go out to agitate for clicks and views but the guys you got here are, are sincere activists i do this shit and i've done it for over a year and a half out of my pocket uh i film i just want to protect and make sure that the cops are not uh harassing uh the the, the regular citizens that's uh primarily uh, but secondarily, I'm trying to uh, build bridges. I'm trying to learn and I'm motivated. Uh, I'm very motivated because uh, I sat up and uh, for all this time, they've been going in my pockets and searching us and, and just treating us shitty. And I didn't know anything about these rights that I have until I got popped uh, and uh, I had to sit on a uh, house arrest for seven months. And then I saw cats like Rove and T.S., and, and I, uh, I knew then, uh, first of all, I was angry because uh, I felt like I'd been tricked and, and you know, and had been abused all this time. I thought they had the powers. They were gods. 
Uh, and then I uh, learned some of my rights. And uh, I fight and battle these guys every day. I don't uh, know if I'm a cop watcher per se, because by definition, they probably don't say anything. They just watch and film. Uh, I don't know if I'm an auditor because they go to uh, stationary uh, places, uh, places, buildings, and do their thing. I am an activist, however. I am an activist, and I've been one since a child. And and I can't wait to, uh, you know, to talk about that pro-cop shit, but I'll give Rogue the floor. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll get into that in a moment. And uh, uh, Rogue, I want to say uh, you're down in Florida. You're the lucky guy uh, right here because you're probably down there about, what, 70, 80 degrees today? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's correct. It's uh, it's pretty warm. I got my windows down. I got my AC running in the house. Well, keep on bragging. We're all freezing everywhere else. Thanks a lot, brother. <laughs> so, what's, what's what what uh, as uh, Tim introduced you into this? You're, you're sort of the. Uh, it sounds like you kind of got some of the things moving here uh, with this platform. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, who are you? Why did you get into this space? And what motivates you to uh, keep doing this every day? Well. Um, I'm just a guy, like any other guy on the street that you might meet. Um, I just, you, you, I took time out of my life specifically to learn about the law and to learn about rights and how society operates and such like that. Uh, along the same lines of, as Joe, uh, I was looking for a way to get stuff done when I came across uh, people like Jeff Gray and Joel Chandler down here in Florida who were making public record requests. They were doing civil rights investigations all on their own. And so that prompted me because I, you know, from my studying of the law and society, it left me a lot of questions that needed answered from the government. Um, and anybody that has tried to go to the government to get answers knows just how hard that is you know, actually is. So when I saw these guys with cameras and I saw that they were getting results, I figured that this would be the best means in order to get those questions answered and to get some kind of level playing field um, for all Americans. You know, I'm a big supporter of, of if, if this is a nation of laws and all men are subject to the law, then, then let's make it that way. Because what we have now is we have a nation of laws that only, you know, some people have to obey and other people's, they say they have to obey them. But really, when it comes to qualified immunity and when it comes to even when they get arrested, uh, the disparity between sentencing of a regular citizen for that crime and someone that's worked for the you know, the public, be it an officer, be it a congressman, be it the city clerk, the disparities in sentencing and stuff like that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and, and, you know, that's that right there is what's creating the divide. You know what I mean? And it's nothing that you can hide or brush up under a rug. You know, I'll give you an example. A lady left her kid in the car by accident. Kid died. She got life. An officer left his kid in the car, kid died. Oh, it was an accident. He's still a cop. No crime, no charge, no time. People see that and then uh, they wonder, you know, who's fooling who, you know? Who's the servant and who's the master, you know? Because the story I got was that we're the master and these guys are the servants. That's why they're called the public servant. Amen. So when we're a nation of laws... And the master obeys all the laws or goes to jail and the servant doesn't, then, then, I mean, obviously we've been lied to somewhere. There needs to be some kind of reconciliation here with this story because it ain't matching up. Okay, Rogue, uh, Rogue Nation, so that was a pretty good intro to, you know, your passion and appreciate the story. And again, I'm a little jealous you're warm down there. And, you know, I want to go back to Joe Cool in Chicago. I want to ask you, Joe, uh, you said you started this uh, kind of activism um, platform about a year ago. What were you doing prior to that? And uh, did you have, uh, if you don't mind sharing, because we want to be, you know, throw it out there. Did you have bad experiences with law enforcement uh, in your life that kind of inspired you to, to sort of get into this challenge? I've had nothing but 
Uh, I uh, sold drugs my entire life, and I've done activism. I've been all over the country. I was one of the top 20 activists in the country, labeled so uh, on 60 Minutes, 48 Hours, and whoever had channels at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I've sold drugs all my fucking life, and I don't believe I've ever been caught square. But I've had them put three or four cases on me. Uh, that's what I was doing before I got. How, so, what's your longest time? What was your longest bid, Joe? Oh, uh, about three months in the county. I've never been down. So I've never been to the pen. Or you, you've avoided uh, the real, the real deal, sort of holy field, getting the hard time. And but you've been in the game. You said in the streets of Chicago. Were you a gang member or a gang banger or however you want to I call? I joined it? when I was ten years old. I joined. There were thirteen uh, four corner hustlers around here. I'm sorry, they were twelve. I was thirteen. Now there are thousands. And no kidding. Was that a, what? What? What was that? A, uh, was it a local gang or was it a street gang or what? what? Uh, Vice Lords. You probably heard of. Vice oh, all day. Lords, I, so. I, I used to interview Vice Lords out here in the East Coast in prison, <laughs> man. Okay, yeah. All right. Straight up. All That's right. crazy. That, there you go. So you were one of the founding members, you're saying? Uh, I was there early. The founding members are people that I know, uh, the, the sect that came here, which is now the heart of the Four Corner Hustler uh, Vice Lord Nation. The sect that came here, I was the 13th member. Mm-hmm. Uh, the leadership had been uh, had been doing other things in other places. Uh, yeah, I was one of founding original motherfuckers in this folk on the hustler uh, shit though i'm one of the old school guys and i'm well plugged and i'm well known when i go to jail it's my job to verify the other gang members because i'm popular you you, you do okay so you're the og and i get it i'm gonna treat you with respect don't want you coming here and shanking me out in connecticut tim i want to ask you a question uh tim with regards to you what and just so the, the listeners know of news rocky we learned about your story before again tyrant slayer studios you put out this content what inspired you directly did you have a, a run-in with the law enforcement or or the legal system that inspired you to go into this uh this this mode i absolutely did i uh i felt i was uh very unjustly treated and my rights were absolutely violated i was uh essentially illegally incarcerated on false charges and put away in the hole for about a month, nothing too serious, nothing too crazy, but it cost me thousands of dollars, uh, an incredible job opportunity, a flight to Florida. I think I was even slated to receive my second and third degree honors for the Knights of Columbus on that fine Sunday. Uh, (laughs) But I was uh, illegally arrested in uh, Farmington, Connecticut on uh, Route 4 at the uh, Suburban Park in 2001 or 2002 and i carried a lot of anger with me for a very long time towards law enforcement as as a result of that uh engagement and uh, eventually that energy burnt itself out um i never actually put it towards anything until much later in life until about the last year or so um when i stumbled across uh these great activists and these inspiring american citizens like like Rogue Nation here and Joe Cool and uh, uh, Rights Crispy and SGV News and Disorderly Product News and all of the guys. I, I've, I've learned a lot from these folks and I, I still had that, that anger, you know, pent down and burnt down inside me. I just conjured it back up and I've, I've really channeled it into something tremendously productive here. And I've, I've been able to, to find great success in doing that. Interesting story, Rogue. Uh, Now I'm going to go back to Rogue Nation. I want to ask you down in Florida there, uh, not the same question, uh, but I want to ask you specifically, do you have law enforcement friends? Do you have people in law enforcement that you have respect for? uh, Or is it just basically a blanket of anyone that wears a badge or, you know, in authority? No, I I absolutely have friends in law enforcement. and, And actually a lot of the tips I get are from people inside law enforcement because you know not everybody in a profession is bad okay but i flip that because you guys say you back the blue Uh and let me let me say something on that i don't think that all cops are bad but i don't believe that because you put on a badge that you're good you know what i mean understood i don't give respect to a man because of a job that he has chosen voluntarily to enter into. Okay. I don't see a doctor walk by on the street and be like, Oh man, he's, I got to respect that guy. You know, this and this and this and this, every man comes to me, he gets the same level of respect until he does it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So I think when you see that, and you know, I just so, think uh, I don't automatically respect somebody, but I automatically I automatically don't disrespect somebody either. I mean, with regards to that Rogue Nation, I, just in response, you know, when I when I say I back the blue, it's hard for me not to. With 21 years of experience, I put a uniform on every day. I actually chased fugitives out here uh, in Connecticut for the Department of Corrections. Uh, I've been involved with law enforcement as a family and friends, and it's a community to me. So I understand what you're saying, but it's also understandable, you know, for people like myself, it's it's pretty easy for us to defend what we believe is, is on the right side of the discussion. Now, I want to say, uh, I, I want to go to Joe Cool on this one. This uh, past uh, year, we went through an experience, not just with COVID, that broke out across this nation and world. We had the George Floyd issue that took place. Did this George Floyd issue uh, explode uh, sort of on the streets, this energy of going and pushing back on law enforcement, in your opinion, Joe Cool in Chicago? Uh, I hate to be the unpopular dude, but I, at that time, uh, when that happened, I was angry. I went to I went to like three protests a, a day. I was, you know, I was there in Wisconsin uh, when the when the guy shot um, the three people. I had just left 10, 10 minutes ago talking to one of the three people uh, that he left. I was there when the first window was broken behind that shit in downtown Chicago. I was at the protest. The reason it was broken is because the um, we were protesting normally and the police came and split us and separated and chased us off and people got angry. Uh, yes, the George Floyd uh, shit sparked a ton. And I'm saying I'm a shitty guy because I want more of that. I don't want all fucking, you know, niggas dying and George Floyd uh, stuff, people dying like that. But until some people, until it affects them, the COVID stuff where they don't get a job, where they can't go to work, until it affects people personally or someone you know and love, people remain inactive. And things like this, it makes it hit home. So I'm of the opinion I want more drama. I want more bullshit because I want this to be over. Don't pacify me. Don't play with me. Don't tell me shit's going to be fine because it's not. We got to revamp this whole fucking thing like Rogue was just talking about. These cops are held unaccountable. You're a guy that boys in blue, black and blue line shit. Fuck that shit, Rocky. Every day them niggas check in in the morning and they hurt people and they lock people up for nonviolent crimes. Ain't no gang member ever snatched me off the street and put me in a, a fucking basement for three months. These guys are brutal. So what you're saying, no, no, good. listen, we want to talk the, the real deal, and I appreciate your perspective. I'm not here for an argument. I'm going to I'm going to feel like I feel and I'm going to respect how you feel. Right. So that's how we get this done, in my opinion. And I yeah. appreciate your your candor. Uh, the question really did focus on we had the George Floyd issue that took place. Uh, obviously, clearly, I think there's not a soul on earth. I hope that there's not that saw that as a, a good move by any law enforcement. You know, I've been trained. In fact, when I started in Department of Corrections in 1992 in Connecticut, we were trained for chokeholds. I'm sure anyone that's engaged with law enforcement back in, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was all was on. You know, you didn't have any rules back then. The rules today of engagement are different. But let me let me skip to this, Joe. I want to before I go back to Tim, I want to ask you something specific. You you sort of said you don't want this to end so what is it that you're actually if you don't want it to end are you just you're, you're a warrior and you're going to fight till you end or would you fight actually to, to have a goal of ending this divide between us it must end uh which is why I, I love ts so much and why i'm here with you i don't like media and all of that shit i do not mm -hmm. uh but the, the why i came here is because he told me that uh you know you were a cop supporter this and that uh, we need, undoubtedly, you're an asset. You're an asset, right? T.S., uh, some of my friends, and, they, and we disagree uh, 100%. Uh, but in order for us to accomplish anything, it's going to take numbers. Both sides. Well, if we stay at a stalemate, uh, us versus them, we're going to be like these politicians and nothing will ever be accomplished. Uh, I must uh, win your hearts. I must learn why you think the way you do. And I must get you to come over and uh, us agree on some things. We're going to agree on more than we disagree anyway. Mm -hmm. I need you to agree on some things and help me get some things accomplished. So I'm very interested in, in, uh, in mending fences. When I'm out here with the cops, bro, I'm out here communicating. I, eight out of ten of my uh, interactions with cops, I don't even film because I'm, uh, I need to build bridges. And they love me. They respect me. At least if they don't love me, they certainly respect me and, um, and, and you know, back me and tell me I'm doing the right thing. I got more fuck cop friends than I care to fucking admit. I need the fucking Republicans. I need the cops. I need everybody. Uh, white folks, you know, they use that racial divide. 
I need everybody, uh, 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 my opposition, my gang opposition, I need to uh, join forces with all of us because I need this to happen. And I will die trying. I am that fighter, man. I don't give a fuck if I win or not. I got to get up and fight every fucking day, and I'm down. I definitely, uh, listen, Joe, I, I, I got to tell you, I hear your passion, your energy. I know it's no joke. This is the real deal, and I appreciate your candor. I want to go to Tim quick on uh, kind of con- continuing this conversation. Tim, you, you sort of, you know, uh, you did help get this group together. I appreciate that very much. Your passion here in Connecticut has been moving forward. Uh, how does someone, and maybe so, how do, how do people fund such programs? I mean, you guys just talked about, and I, each one of you can kind of explain, this is coming out of your own pockets. How are you guys funding these projects? You said it. It literally comes out of our own pockets. Uh, we have a very supportive, uh, very large community. I mean, it's not a perfect community, but we do have a very large online presence on YouTube and on social media. And with the launch of Activism News Network, uh, which is a paid subscription service, it's three ninety nine dollars a month, uh, there is some there is an alternative revenue stream coming in now and we have in our unity collectivized that that revenue and we are pooling that revenue together for the purposes of pulling records acquiring body cam footage if one of our guys is illegally incarcerated we'll have the immediate means to get him out uh and and make it make sure he gets home to his family you know instead of being kept from his family and stuff for a night uh but yeah if, uh, on our channels, on our YouTube channels, personally, we are all personally invested in this, and it all comes right out of our pocket. All of our video equipment, all of our computer equipment, all of our editing equipment, our phones, you name it. It all costs money. It costs money to travel. Everything we do costs money, and it's a very worthwhile endeavor uh, given the fruit that could potentially lie at the end of this tunnel should we be able to mend these fences in these chores like we are engaged in today you know we are here to create bridges and to educate people we are not agitators and we are not activists in the sense that the negative stigma that's associated with the term comes with you know we're just regular everyday american citizens fighting for our own rights and trying to make our fellow citizens neighbors friends family and strangers aware of their rights as well so that we can fight together and ultimately create a better country and a better future for all of our children. Thank you, Tim. And I want to go to Rogue Nation down in Florida again. uh, I'm going to stay with uh, some of the line of questioning was brought up by Joe Cool. The political part of uh, the world we live in today, politics plays a really, really big role in a lot of the noise we hear. Uh, Actually creates, I think, more divide. I'm a former politician. I can tell you I was behind the curtain up here in Connecticut. And, uh, you know, uh, I can tell you how dirty and corrupt all sides of politics are. Uh, are. Uh, Rogue Nation down there in Florida, do you think that the political side of things uh, amplify this divide here and don't help uh, resolving some of these issues uh, that you're fighting against? Of course, absolutely. I mean, when it comes down to it, the uh, police are nothing more than the enforcement arm of the politicians. You know, there's something I like to point out. And uh, if you watch my videos and, and, and you said you were former law enforcement, I don't know if that means you were on the street answering calls but if you were what you'll tend to notice in my videos what i like to point out is whenever i'm going to a a, a public building be it city hall or the public works department or the post office even whenever i go to these public buildings and these people the public servants want me trespassed or want me out of there and they call the police the responses that not only me, but Joe and TSS, the responses that we get are just incredible. I mean, never seen before on a civilian scale. You know, if you're at home and someone, you come home and you found someone broke into your house and you make that call, you're not going to get five or six officers there in 10 minutes. It's just not going to happen, you know? Uh, there's a, there's specifically one that I want to point out that you should definitely watch. It's called When a Good Cop Goes Bad. It was filmed in Panama City Beach. I was in the city hall. Now, the officers there knew that I was legally allowed to be there. Okay? No problem with me being there. But because the, uh, the people that worked there felt uncomfortable, I got a corporal and a sergeant to chaperone me while I was just standing there literally just standing there with my camera 
And these guys were right on me, one on each side of me, belittling me, you know, harassing me, uh, trying to get me to make a move. Um, and I, I thought to myself now, if I was standing just outside of that building on the corner and some citizens had walked by and they saw me with my camera and they felt uncomfortable, I was thinking, would these two cops stand on the sidewalk next to me for 20 minutes harassing me because <laughs> some civilian walking by felt uncomfortable that I was recording? And unless somebody is light of mind, they're going to realize that this would never, ever be a possibility except in some kind of alternate universe. There is a strange love connection going on with the police and our public servants. OK, I don't know if it's behind closed doors or whatever, but if you're a public servant and you call the police, you're going to get a major response and you're going to get it right on the dot. Do you okay? think that you but think that love affair uh, just Rogue huh? Nation, if I can ask Rogue Nation for your comments there, did you do you think that love affair that you call out is uh, specifically on one side of the aisle or the other? Is it conservative Republicans loving law enforcement or is it the Democrat liberals as well, in your opinion? No, in this instance, it's, it doesn't matter. When they call the police, when the person at City Hall calls the police, the police don't ask them if they're Democrat or Republican. They're going to send six cars in 10 minutes regardless of what party you are. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, as far as the government, you know, the Democrats and Republicans, I mean, in my opinion, I, I don't think we're seeing much difference. I mean, these guys are still eating at the same country clubs. They're still playing golf together, you know, and, and I tell people it's hard to see the problems of the common man as you speed by in your limo. And, um, and, and, and I, you know, a lot of people believe the left, right thing going on in the country, but, but I'm not one of them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here with government is government, no matter what letter you put behind the name, your government, even if you're a libertarian, a libertarian only wants his version of government. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there it is. Yeah. It's government. Okay? Amen, Rogue. Amen. And again, the love affair is with, with their protectors, the law enforcement. So you got these guys up here and they write the laws and they exclude themselves from the law. And then they have these guys here that protect them. And that's why qualified immunity was put into play. Because these guys realize that these guys ain't going to protect them if during that course of protecting them, they make a mistake and they go to jail. OK, so I'm that's what that is. The police are the enforcement arm for guys like us that just happen to get into power and write some laws that they exempt themselves from. And they realize people are going to be pissed about it. And... Uh, they, uh, bro, bro you said three times, and I've been keeping quiet because I know the rules. Uh, but <laughs> go ahead, uh, go ahead, there, Joe. You got it. There are good points. Saying the first sign of an occupying force is they refuse to obey the same laws that they enforce, and that is exactly what you said three times. The laws apply differently or not at all to them. Uh, they are not here to help us, to assist us. Uh, they are here to keep the riffraff down, exactly like you're saying. We're the riffraff and those with power connections. And certainly any government freaking job, you can be a security job and you feel that connection for some reason with law enforcement. And they feel it with you. And anybody who's not down with that fucking uh, that group of people and that uh, a group think, uh, they are in jeopardy. Uh, it suddenly becomes a police job uh, to hurt you. I got to tell you, Rogue Nation, you, you said uh, you touched on... Uh, you know, the immunity piece, the qualified immunity, we had that uh, being debated here in the state of Connecticut. I strongly stood against it. And again, it may use my background. I mean, I'm just, you know, we're being honest, having an honest conversation here uh, because of my position and I'm respecting yours. But I want to go back to Joe Cool on the political uh, conversation. How much politics plays into this entire narrative uh, uh, created? Do you think the Democrats, uh, liberals, are fighting for exactly what you're fighting for? Or do you think it's, it really doesn't matter, as Rogue Nation pointed out? All right. First of all, I'm not a child, right? Anybody, in my opinion, I don't want to be too harsh that believes that Dem versus Republican shit is blind. I want to call them a harsh name, mm -hmm. but but they don't see. Uh, the entire system is set up. First of all, these people work hand in hand together, whether they know it or not. 
an entire system is set up that no good uh, deed do-gooder can go in there and, and make a fucking change, right? He has to take that same, same slot. He has to form certain uh, bonds and make deals. And the higher you get, you certainly are not allowed your opinion. You think every damn Democrat up there believes that when these uh, votes are always 50-51? That's insane. Anyone who believes that that shit uh, is insane. All these guys go lockstep and believe that bullshit. So I'm a fan of no, neither Democrat, nor Republican, nor politician, nor cop. So, Joe, you're, you're, in, a, you're, in, you're in Chicago, and some of the highest uh, shootings take place in Chicago. Talk a little bit about that going. I mean, how do, I mean you, you're, you're right in the middle of it. I'm, I'm respecting you. I just I want to hear your version of what's going on. And the police are out there fighting, I, I assume, against these real criminals that are out there shooting with guns and killing people. What's your opinion of that there in Chicago? All right. First of all, the first part of your question, I'm going to uh, show you uh, where I am. I guess you can see my picture. Where I am right now is one of the deadliest quarters in Chicago's uh, weed spot. Uh, I'm out here smoking. Okay. You having a little? You having uh, a little? You went into the dispensary? No, no, no. It's not the legal weed. Spot. Oh, this is. You're telling me you're you're okay. You're. <laughs> All right. All right. Very cool. Very good. We're good. Okay. We won't, okay. we won't snitch on you. I got, I won't, I won't subscribe to it, brother. <laughs> but this one is so deadly. It, uh, it, it deserves, uh, it, it, it gets a 24 hour police, uh, presence every time they've left, even if it's for a short amount of time, uh, people get murdered, uh, up here. So yes, there's a lot of, uh, killing and violence. And if that's what the police were only addressing and shit, I, we'd probably all be down with helping them out and, and having them do their job. Uh, but we know that's not the case, right? Because when the police pull in behind us, uh, unless you're down with that group Roe was talking about somehow, uh, your heart sinks. You don't think I feel safe a couple of coppers around. Uh, uh, they are there to take their money and do all these other things. So if they save a fucking Bernie Bay burning, a uh, baby from a burning building on uh, Monday, you know, great. But fucking uh, Sunday and Tuesday, uh, that motherfucker's going to be out here backing his buddies, taking money from me and doing all this bullshit. So there is no good cop. The same way there is no good person. Uh, there's no such thing. Uh, well, I, I, well, I appreciate your candor, and especially with the, the spot you're in. I, and just relax, enjoy smoking your your, your productive uh, stuff there. I'm a big supporter of legalizing marijuana as a pr- right, Republican. Man, I heard that about right, So, uh, Tim, I want to go to you. Tim, what, what do you think about the Second Amendment rights uh, facing the challenges that uh, face citizens of America here? Uh, just your opinion uh, of the Second Amendment and, and what's your belief in it? Well, I love the Second Amendment. I love all of the amendments. Uh, the right to bear arms is always going to remain near and dear to my heart, and I'm sure any uh, God-fearing, loving American's heart. Um, you know, I think it's terrifying what we see coming down the pike, uh, the the proposed uh, insurance policy for these guns and things of that nature, the exuberant costs, the entire process of being fingerprinted to be able to exercise your already God-given inalienable right to bear and keep arms, you know, to me is asinine. Like, I, I, I have a serious issue with having to give up fingerprints, go see the chief of police, get a background check done, uh, you know, come and tell me why you want a gun. Tell me who you are, where you're from. Pay me $90, then go see that guy and pay him $90. And then when you're done doing that, wait at home until you get this thing in the mail to where you'll have to send out another $90. Then come back for another meeting. And in the middle of all of this COVID nonsense, it's it's extremely difficult. It's a painstaking process to renew your concealed and carry permit, which as far as I'm concerned, you don't even need because you have the Second Amendment right. You know, no state can tell you what rights you can exercise and what rights you can't as far as I'm concerned. But I'm no lawyer. Joe, but, Joe, you know, cool. I want to ask you the same question. Uh, I don't know if you carry a gun legally. I don't know if you carry a gun illegally. I'm not asking that. Do you support the Second Amendment rights for people to legally bear arms in, in America? Listen, man, when everyone carries guns, man, motherfuckers behave. Um, uh, you know, aside from the reason it was written in, uh, we are victims here. Any motherfucker with a gun knows he can get away with it. He's a god. That don't happen in Texas. 
Uh, yeah, I need every motherfucker arm. I need every motherfucker arm, Joe. And I'm with T.S. Don't you fucking ask me no questions. I ain't got to jump through hoops and fucking give you, sign a piece of document, explain some shit to you. Nigga, that's given to me by fucking God. Fuck what you talking about. Uh, and I do not want to fucking, uh, uh, I do not want to have to ask your permission and explain something to you like you're my fucking dad. That's insane. I'm with you, T.S. You know, you know, uh, Rogue, we're going to get to you in a second here, but Tim, you did not let me down. You told me Joe Cool was going to deliver with a certain flavor of language, man. I appreciate what you let me down. Uh, I love Ro- Joe Cool. We love the community, loves Joe Cool. He's a hell of a character. He's got yeah. a tremendous level of depth, and yeah. he is a very passionate, passionate Listen, man. Listen, all, we all have uh, our own paths, and I respect everybody's. I appreciate the honesty. Rogue Nation, I want to go to you on the Second Amendment rights. Down in Florida, uh, some of the toughest laws protecting folks with guns. In fact, we've seen over the years actually shootings take place uh, down in Florida where actually people were able to stop maybe a robbery or detain someone. Some tragic things, obviously, when we look back in the history of Florida. What's your feelings on the Second Amendment? And do you think that that is something you uh, you definitely want the government to stay out of your way? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm all for um, personal rights as far as the right to defend yourself. Absolutely. I think uh, where a lot of people get confused is because they equate our civil rights to natural rights. And because the government didn't teach us the difference, a lot of people don't understand the restrictions imposed on the Second Amendment. Um and, and because of that, you know, again, because of the lack of education that the government has, has intentionally left out of our education, um, we have people that, that you know, they, they don't understand what's going on. And a lot of Americans today, when they see the government doing stuff, whether it be on immigration or this or that or taxes, they don't understand. And a lot of people will be like, oh, man, that's unconstitutional. But here today on this program, I'd like to submit a theory. And that is whenever we think something is unconstitutional, perhaps we should just look at it a different way. Perhaps it's constitutional and perhaps the government has lied about what the Constitution is and how it applies to regular citizens. Because I don't see a lot of people uh, thinking along those lines, you know, and, 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 and really with the government that has lied about everything, I mean, literally everything from GDP to inflation numbers to, I mean, anything you could put your little finger on, the government has lied some way, shape or form to believe that they've lied about everything except the constitute <laughs> is laughable. Kind of naive. Don't we, don't we think? No, I, I, listen, I mean, uh, <laughs> We just found a common ground amongst things right here in this this uh, segment of this show. And again, guys, you're listening uh, to three very interesting gentlemen throughout the country. Uh, we have the, uh, the obviously Tim, who's been on the show here with Tyrant Slayer. Uh, studios. We got Joe Cool out of Chicago sharing his story and Rogue Nation sharing their stories of their activism and their movement of sort of challenging uh, these government agencies as they, you know, sort of uh, operators of the law uh, here throughout the country. And I do agree on this. The Constitution is an interpretation by any political official. Uh, and then it is enforced as it goes down. And I got to tell you that one of the greatest challenges... <laughs> I got to tell you, well, I think I was a cheer from uh, my friend Joe there, but it is an interpretation. And, and, and quite often we see this being utilized as campaign promises. And Joe, since you made the noise, I'm going to go back to you. In the, in the city of Chicago, you have a very uh, interesting mayor. Uh, she's been very much under uh, a lot of stress. I want to ask you, because fundamentally, I think everyone, and I talked to Tim about this, and Rogue will hear after I talk to Joe, this should be about the next generation for our kids, right? I mean, if you're fighting for anything, it should be the next generation. How do you feel the city of Chicago, and particularly the mayor, is taking on these challenges, Joe, that you're out there fighting against and getting kids back to school uh, as much as anything is another question I want to hear an answer from you. I think uh, she has totally excluded them, haven't even thought about them. None of this shit that she does, uh, in my opinion, uh, is about the uh, kids. She came in there on the platform. She was going to um, uh, change and, and, and do all these things, man. But she got in there. She's, I've never seen someone become so politically entrenched in so short of a time. Uh, you know, 
uh, every time she uh, puts out a fucking ordinance or something, me and Dick DPN, we go break that shit day one. Any rule, we've audited her house twice. Uh, you, does, does, she, the mayor, does the mayor know you personally, Joe? She does not, but all of her guys do it. I mean, every fucking one of them. I don't think she does, but okay. her next door neighbor does. Yeah. All of her top cops uh, do, and they don't like me. Oh, I got stories about that shit. Bro. Well, that's that's probably for another time, Joe. Cool, but uh, Rogue Nation, I sort of want to go on to you, and I, I want to ask you: Where's your vision of your platform? Where do you think it's going to be? Let's say six months, twelve months, two, five years down the road, what are you going to build? And, uh, you know, how are you going to expand your uh, connections across the country? Um, well, the good news is, and, and I don't want to say it's good news because it's actually sad and re repulsive and, and just heartbreaking news. But the, the news is, is that the government builds my platform government is out there violating someone's rights they're they're you know kicking out too much or too little social security by uh by messing with the inflation numbers and saying that there's no cost of living increase i mean there's just so many ways and i get stories every single day and i, I kid you not every single day i get stories about government corruption and again some of these are from the government themselves all right. So it's not like that's a conspiracy guy sitting in his underwear in his basement saying, oh, you know, I think there's chemtrails up above I'm getting calls <laughs> from county commissioners. Literally, I'm getting calls from county commissioners telling me that the sheriff is the one bringing the drugs into the county. OK, these are the calls that I'm getting. All right. So we know it's real and we know it's out there. And so my my vision for my platform, not the Rogue Nation platform, but for the Activism News Network platform, is to have it so that we have the juice. When we have enough subscribers to our channel, we'll have the juice to send four, five, six, seven of us guys to an area, and we'll audit them. We'll put cameras on every corner. We'll hire private investigators <laughs> to follow these guys around. Right. We'll pull public. Yeah, we'll pull every public record they got. We'll hire forensic accountants. <laughs> I mean, activism news. And, and, I, and I pray and I and I hope that the government is praying that the, that we don't get the support, because if we do get the support, there'll be a level of accountability on our government officials that has never been seen here in America before. Amen. And well, that is something that I will guarantee with my life. I'm already basically doing it with two dollars. <laughs> if I get subscribers that that I have enough subscribers that I could fly out three or four of my boys, we could stay there for a week and we could put the pressure on. Yeah, buddy. You can believe you're going to see some changes. You're going to see a lot of changes. So yeah, what that, that's Rocky, what I'm about. Rocky, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, what do you think about these ideas? Is this something that uh, you're down, you're back? But I'm curious about you. Bro. So here we go. We uh, got Joe Cool. Of course, we knew it was going to be him to flip the script on, on News Rocky and start interviewing me. Thanks, Joe, for the question. <laughs> Uh, you know, let, let me let me say it like this. Uh, I respect where you got what you guys are doing, 100. percent I've grown, you know, getting to know Tim and sort of talking to him. I understand what he's talking about. I still am not I'm not over the threshold. Let me let me be quite honest with you. I'm still a believer uh, in the system. I was a part of the system, uh, Joe. I mean, it's hard for me to to turn my back on what I I, I raised my family on, and I didn't. You know what I mean? I'm being honest. It's hey, man. You asked me, I'm telling you. But you know what? At, at the end of the day, Joe, I think you'll appreciate this. I'm always going to be down for the conversation and this platform, this show. I mean, yesterday or, or we have I've had Alex uh, uh, Jones on my show. Everyone wants to silence Alex Jones. I've had Stormy Daniels on my show. I'm a conservative Republican. And we've now we have you guys. You definitely I've reached the pinnacle. I know my, I keep climbing the mountain <laughs> with you three. So but my point to that is I'm about talking to people and sharing the story. And you know what? Regardless of what I might think, it's about how you can start convincing people who are your constituents your people on your platform. Yes. So I'm going to support you in that effort. Tim, I want to say thank you for today. I want to go through the lineup one more time. Uh, I want you guys to announce or at least let News Rocky people know where they can find your platform. Direct them to that right now, Tim. We'll go from you to Rogue and we'll finish with Joe Cool because he's just so cool. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you so much, News Rocky, for having us today. You can find my work on YouTube by searching Tyrant Slayer Studios 
Uh, you can find our uh, Facebook fan page and regularly updated kind of blog, if you will, at Worthy Son of Liberty on Facebook. If you throw at Worthy Son of Liberty up in the search field, you'll find me there. I'm also available on Twitter and on Instagram. Those accounts are kind of slow moving right now. And I do have a web domain that's up and coming. It's uh, www.tyrantslayerstudios.com. If you have a story and you'd like to reach out to me and you're in the Connecticut area and you'd like to report on some corruption or some unlawful activities uh, on behalf of your public servants, please feel fee- free to reach out and email me at studioadmin at tyrantslayerstudios.com. Perfect. Rogue, why don't you go ahead and roll out your uh, contact information for the viewers, please? Excellent. All right. Well, you can find me on YouTube under Rogue Nation Audits. And you can find all of us and 19 more great activists from all across the country on Roku under Activism News Network. And you can find us on your desktop under ActivismNewsNetwork.com. That's it. Well, appreciate that. Uh, Joe Cool, uh, we're going to go to you last. Where can people find you uh, if they want you? Uh, I'm sure you must get a lot of requests for public speaking events. Where can they find you at, Joe? <laughs> 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 I have no, I'm on YouTube. I have no other social media uh, or, or anything, but I'm super popular. You type in Joe Cool on YouTube, that you'll see me. And ANN, uh, I don't advertise anywhere. I'm telling you, if you're going to have to type in fucking Joe Cool and go to Activism News Network. Uh, and that's, as far as I know, the only place you're going to find me. And it's worth your fucking time. I swear it is, bro. Very good. All right. Well, I want to thank the uh, panelists today for their honest uh, opinions and their positions on this uh, this battle they wage against what uh, they believe is justice for all. I, I appreciate their honesty. Uh, I, I, again, like I said to Joe Cool, I, I'm not quite there just yet. Uh, I don't think I ever will be. But what I am definitely interested in is sharing the story. And so, as we said, News Rocky, this whole platform, we bring it to you Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. You can watch it right here on the Forward TV network. And uh, we want to keep on having this conversation. So I'm going to throw it out to you three. This is just the first of a many-part series. I want to keep continuing this conversation. So if you're all very much, uh, if you can go through Tim, we can coordinate. And also, please, guys, send some videos to Tim. I want Tim to send those videos to me. I want to get these videos up so we can start to create some more conversations about your active uh, work throughout Rocky, the country. Rocky, I was thinking the same thing. Rogue has a, a video where he uh, evacuated the DMV. I was uh, wasn't going to let you leave without <laughs> saying you should at some point show that bid and we should talk about it. So me and you are definitely on the same vibe. 100%. And, you know, uh, again, I'm going to wrap it up here because we got to end the show to get to the next one. But I will say thank you guys for coming on today. I appreciate your honesty. Again, we're not, you know, there's a bridge. And uh, one thing that was said here on the News Rocky show, and I believe it was Joe Cool or, or Rogue, and even Tim said it as well, we all can disagree to agree, or we can agree to disagree, rather. There's six out of tens. That's the rule I live by. I've lived by it my entire life. If I can find six out of ten reasons, I'm on the same page. doesn't mean we're have the same goals or same, you know, sort of objective at the end of the day, but we can cohabitate together as a society. And I think that's what we need to do. News Rocky gets in the ring each and every day, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m., bringing you what I hope is some stimulating content. Guys, tune in tomorrow to News Rocky. We'll definitely be bringing you more inspiring stories like this. And guys, once again, uh, just appreciate you, Tim, uh, Joe Cool, and Rogue Nation for this uh, this uh, pleasure uh, and this interview here with uh, News Rocky. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the ring tomorrow.